Hey everyone, Zach Butler YGO back with another video. This time with the format coming to an end in just a couple weeks, I thought I'd show you a deck I've been having a ton of fun playing lately while I've been trying to figure out what else to do, you know, with the Vanquish Soul strategy. And that's been uh, Eldlich with Runic cards, as you can see. Uh, there's a ton of theory that goes into this, and before anything else, I want to give a shout out to uh, Jared Centimore. He's the one who showed me the deck initially, and I've just been running with it, and it's been a ton of fun. Um, if you like this sort of content, let me know with a comment like, and if you're not already subscribed, please do. That helps out a ton, and it's free. And if you want to see more videos like this, let me know. We're just going to jump right on in with the main deck, though. We're going to go engine by engine, and really go into why each of these things make sense. So first you have your two Eldritch the Golden Lords. Uh, the reason for two copies instead of three, despite the fact that Bestials are very prominent right now, you know, Joshua just won with the Bestial Runic deck. We had Bestial Druus Worm sided in triplicate in a ton of decks in the top 64 of that YCS. And then we've also got Dragon Link and things like that. The reason why I don't want to ever play three of this, though, is as good of a draw as it can be, I really don't want to see this card in my opening hand. It's very clunky. So that's why there's only two. However, I do have serious consideration for maybe going to three, especially if the Runic deck takes off and continues to be more popular. The need for a third Golden Orb will be there because you will need to make sure that you constantly have one in rotation. Then for the trap cards, it's very simple. We just have three Scarlet Sanguine, three Conquistador, and three Huacero. So typically it's a 3-3-2 three, three, ratio. However, with the, again, the Runic Vistial deck being so popular with Unchained, Fire King, Labyrinth, uh, just kind of like the amalgamation of, of the format being so popular, um, I wanted to see three Huacero because it just... It has more agency than it has previously. Also, with lacking bodies, the additional body does come up. You could make an argument for cutting one of the Huacaros for a uh, Elder Elixir of Black Awakening, or White Awakening even, just to make sure that your Golden Lord can um, be seen more frequently. I'm not sure necessarily if that's the best idea. I did consider it though, because sometimes you will run out of Scarlets, which is a little pro uh, problematic. But the 3-3-3 three, three, three ratio is pretty uh, stock standard in an old one. So we're just going to move on from that. That's the part that I think is pretty much the most understood part about any uh, Eldritch deck. The part that is different, though, is the Runic Engine, which consists of one Fountain, three Tip, three Flashing Fires, two Freezing Curses, two Destruction, and a Slumber. So... 12 runic cards in your 40 card deck gives you pretty good odds to see two. Um, you obviously would prefer to see two quick, two quick play spells over the fountain, although I have found that for some odd reason the fountain is glued to my hand. The main benefit of the runic cards in the Eldritch deck is protection. Um, getting to utilize Hugin, uh, banish effect is incredibly important in this deck because you don't want to have to use, you know, counter traps like Judgment and things like that on Harvey's Feather Duster if you can avoid it. So, and Lightning Storm, which is also very popular. So being able to just, as a quick play, activate one of these and summon Hugin, then banish it right away is very important. That has come up a number of times. The other thing that they offer this deck is a, uh, you don't rely on Floodgates as much, which is great considering that we just saw there can be only one rivalry of Warlords and goes in match, each go to one. Uh, you're relying more on your runic spells to slow the game down, uh, and then you can play more exchange trap cards, um, you know, like one-for-one -one style cards, which is typically not great in a format where cards like, you know, Unchained, uh, Soul of Sharvara, and things like that exist. Um, but you have Flashing Fire being the main utility spell that you play. Being able to remove monsters is key when you don't really have, you know, the ability to attack over them, you need to be able to destroy them. Uh, then there's two Freezing Curses. Typically, I prefer playing three in Runic decks. Um, you know, historically, you always want to see as many Runic cards as you can. However, with Skill Drain in the deck, Freezing Curses gets a lot worse, especially after turn one. So that's why there's only two, because with the three tips, it's five copies, which is uh, just over 50% to see one in your opening hand. And then Destruction is also added as a two of 
because it gives you the ability to actually have back row removal in a trap deck, which isn't very common. Um, and then there's just one slumber as kind of like a throwaway one. This could be pretty much anything. I just like slumber because it's one of the only spells that doesn't really require a setup. And sometimes you'll just like tip um, for slumber after using something, to, or using one of them to summon your Hugin, and then um, you can just activate slumber, target Hugin, banish three, and get the draws, um, which is really huge in this deck because you don't play Card of Demise, you don't play Pot of Prosperity or Pot of Duality, things like that, that you would typically see in more of a stun deck. Um, so the Fountain Engine really gets you a lot of your advantage, and then even if they get rid of the Fountain, that's actually totally fine. Um, as long as you get like two or three draws off of it, you're super far ahead because of the way that the trap cards work and the fact that these are all utility cards. So even if this is gone, you still have uh, all these utility spells, which is really important. So I really like the Runic Engine in this deck a lot. Um, and losing the battle phase doesn't tend to matter as much because you are only main decking two monsters. And other than the Runic Traps, you actually don't really have monsters to attack with. So you're really just slow rolling the advantage. Uh, for Floodgates, I am playing six. I'm playing three Skill Drain and then three Summon Limit. Um, I've gone back and forth uh, between Summon Limit, Goes and Match, There Can Be Only One, um, Rivalry of Warlords, and things like that. And I found that Summon Limit is the best one across the board. It's good against legitimately every deck you would expect to face right now, besides Runic Stun, which at that point, sure. Um, while also not having the disadvantages that Rivalry and Gozen tend to have, or even there can be only one. Um, it's good going first, obviously, because you can stop them from setting up, but it's really good going second, too, because going second often, I'll just sit there and watch my opponent play, and then I'll set five, and I'll pass turn, and on their turn, I'll flip skill drain, I'll, you know, get rid of their field somehow, and then when they go to set up again, they have already burned a ton of resources, and now they're under summon limit and dealing with your myriad of trap cards, which is really hard to do. So these cards tend to get a ton of agency. Um, one thing with Skill Drain 2 is that it's actually not that powerful right now. Um, with everybody knowing that Labyrinth is a deck and things like that, you'll see a lot more triggers happening. Um, even under Skill Drain, you know, when I've been playing like Vanquish and stuff and I'll attack with Fenrir and I'm under Skill Drain, I'll still activate the Fenrir just in case they do a removal effect and I'll get the effect to go off. Um, which is huge, and also, Skill Drain is one of the most well-understood floodgates there is, and it has the least restrictive um, ability, but I like having it, even though it's probably not going to live very long, just to slow down the game for a couple turns, to really let your runic spells get you that advantage. Um, one of the big things you do to get advantage is uh, the three Solemn Strikes, and then, like, the card I've been loving lately is three Debunk. So... Debunk is very strong right now, and I think it's underutilized. Um, not even necessarily underutilized. It's that there's really no deck that can play it, because um, you have to set it, obviously, which is typically not good. Um, but what Debunk does, if you aren't aware, is uh, if your opponent activates a monster effect from the hand or graveyard, you negate the activation and banish it. And that's a counter trap. So think of kind of like a Calm by the Grave, but that they can't respond to. And it's really crazy how strong of a card that is. Uh, one of the things that uh, has made the Eldritch Engine so much worse is the Bestials and DD Crow. Uh, and then you've got Ash Blossom and Ghost Bell. Well, this stops all of those. This also happens to do the same thing for the Runic Engine, because that tends to be what stops the Runic Engine from getting you all those draws is the Ghost Bells and the Ash Blossoms. So if you have this in hand, a lot of the times you're actually going to just set and not even really set up that strong of a board you're gonna and by strong of a board i mean like you know trying to do the runic draw three combo and stuff like that combo play um aggressively you're gonna actually wait on it just so that way you can ensure it goes through with debunk because once they see that you're playing eldritch traps and once they see that you're playing runic cards they're gonna save their interruptions for those and they'll probably even keep them in as well so these cards are also good games two and three debunk also has applications against unchained cards uh both the hand and graveyard effects which is incredible it has applications against the fire king deck against labyrinth against all the furniture so it's got a lot of applications i think that are just really under looked at and i think that this is a card that um, going forward could be pretty solid going into the next format and then the last three cards are three dogmatica punishments 
uh, just as like a utility trap, and two Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon. So the reason for Karma Cannon is twofold. Um, one, it is sort of like a Book of Eclipse in that, you know, obviously it sets everything, um, and it's removal that doesn't destroy, which is key for Fire Kings and Unchained if, you know, that ever comes up. Um, it's also good against Pearly, obviously, but it one of the coolest things about it is that it can reutilize your Eldritch Traps um, because, you know, you were forced to set them, so you set them in the Spell Trap Zone, and then when you flip, you get to flip them again and get extra destruction or banishing off of them. I've done that a few times, and it's been very, very uh, key in a few matchups, so that's something to keep into mind um, if you're playing these cards as well. And Punishment, obviously, you're not really playing an aggressive deck. You're not playing a deck that summons from the extra deck very much anyway, so you have the room to spare, and it gets you a chance to slow down the game to where you can play it at your pace. For the extra deck, this is still, a, um, it's really up in the air. Uh, I've been playing two Hugans. Uh, the first one tends to use its effect, and then the second one is there just for utility. Um, some games you won't even get to use its effect, you'll just summon this as a utility card because you feel like you don't really need to get the runic cards online right away. Um, its utility effect of banishing to replace the destruction of cards is actually my favorite part about it. Searching for Fountain doesn't really matter to me as much as the banishing to save your cards because there are so many lightning storms. There are Harpy's Feather Dusters, and you know, you've know you got uh, Unchained, uh, the Unchained Trap that pops. You've got Labyrinth that can destroy cards in the fields like that. Um, there's just so much going on right now in the format that destroys that Hugan actually gets a lot of value. Another card that I play primarily for time, but also if I think they're going to cite in a Cosmic Cyclone, is Moon in the Runic Wings. Um, this is also, if you just need like a random body to chump block, really good because it's the least valuable one in your deck if you've gone through your Hugans. Um, and the life point gain, obviously, you know, it sucks that that's a thing that we have to worry about in the modern format, but it does help. And then there's one Freki, the Runic Fangs. Uh, what's important about Freki is that it's got 2,000 attack, which can matter under Skill Drain, because typically it doesn't get to deal battle damage, but if you flip Skill Drain and then you go to battle phase, activate a Runic Spell and attack, that's, you know, 2,000 attacker, which is huge. It's also a dark, which is really important because it means that when you use it with a Eldritch Trap, it is a full... Uh, Effect Chaos Angel, which is huge. Um, I found that this card is really important. And then the last runic card I play is Slepner, the runic main. This turns all of your runic spells, including Slumber, into monster removal. And when you're playing, and if you happen to draw like your rivalry or your goes in, and you know it's live, or you, you side it in and you're, it's live, you can just summon this. And then as soon as they draw, they get a token, and then they're locked with that token, and it can be really big. Um, it doesn't come up often, but it is there as an option. Then there's the one Chaos Angel, just as the utility synchro, uh, one Constellar Pleiades. This card is obviously really good for rank fives, which is what your, um, traps are, they're level fives. And then one, um, Typhon, which is just an incredible card. Doesn't really come up that often in this deck, so it being, uh, 2900 attack actually matters for punishment. And then for the Link Monsters, I play one Link Spider, one SP Little Knight, and one Black Luster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. I've considered taking this out for, um, what's the name of that card? Uh, the Rank 5, or the Link 5, uh, Chaos Goddess. Uh, I thought about taking this out for Chaos Goddess, but I like that some, if it ever comes up, this is just a Link 3 that is untargetable. And a lot of removal right now is going to struggle against that. Uh, SP Little Knight is unfortunately pretty commonly seen in this deck. Um, if I get any gameplay footage, you'll see it tends to come up a lot, namely because you're going to use it to um, dodge like their negation effects, and you're also just going to use it just as a kind of a throwaway body. Um, hence the Link Spider in there as well. Link Spider is necessary to go into SP. Um, you could make an argument for playing uh, different links like if you don't have an sp that's totally fine i just find that i've used it a lot but you can still get pretty good results without it um but you could play uh the imduk um you could play one of the zombie link twos. there's plenty of other options and then for the dogmatica punishment only targets you've got two elder entity nits hiss uh one garura wings of resident life and one tri brigade arms bucephalus two uh, I don't think I really need to explain too much about these. I've thought about taking out one Natis for an Omega, 
um, which then gives you the ability to recycle any of your extra deck cards as well. Um, that is an option that I am very on the fence about, um, just because I feel like having that extra utility of just having the Natis might be more important um, instead of having to send the Omega, recycle the Omega, and then get the second Natis. So it's, just, it's a lot more setup. And then for the side deck, uh, the side deck does need to change with the new format, but we can definitely go over that sometime. Um, and I can go over, actually just go over some of the changes I was thinking about now. Uh, first, you have three Inspector Border. Uh, this card is super annoying, and I totally understand that. But most of the time when they see that you're playing a deck with two mo monsters in the main deck, they're going to probably take up their droplets, their imperms, um, things like that. And then they just get stuck dealing with an Inspector Border which can be incredibly frustrating, especially because most decks right now can't really get to the point of having all the different extra deck types out without a lot of setups through monster effects. So Inspector Border can be really useful there. Uh, just be careful um, because of how it can conflict with the runic spells. You do need to make sure you normal summon this first and then activate your runic spell, which does still leave you vulnerable to Ash Blossom, so that's kind of an unfortunate thing, but that is also their only hand, their only monster effect that they get to use that turn, so they can't, you know, do something later if they want to. Um, then I play three Lava Golems. Uh, again, good for time, but it's really just because it's removal, and your normal summon isn't that important. Being able to remove two monsters instead of one is really important. Um, the only downside is that it's a fire, which can matter for uh, the Fire King deck, but that's kind of just a sacrifice you have to make. Uh, then I side three Solemn Judgments for when I go first. Um, obviously, Solemn Judgment is an incredible card. However, it is really just there to stop evenly matched. Uh, that is a card that can legitimately auto-win this matchup. Like, no matter what it is, it can almost just make you scoop on the spot if you get even lead for four or five. So having Solemn Judgment in there as that out is always really good. And then the part of the side deck that definitely needs to change is three Rivalry of Warlords. Um... These need to come out. You could probably take two of these out for like one. There can be only one, and one goes in match and still have the three floodgates. Um, you only side these in when the summon limit doesn't make sense. Um, and I don't really like goes in match as much, so um, losing two of these is actually really impactful. But the summon limit is still the preferred uh, trap card in that sense. Um, but you do have these as a backup. And then I was citing three evenly matched. These have also been, um, like, what else have they been? Uh, different Dimension Grounds. They've been Anti-Spell Fragrances. They've been kind of all over the place. This is the slot that I'm the most unsure about. Um, I just wanted these to be removal, and these were pretty solid. The downside being you do have to skip your battle phase a lot. And the other problem that I have with evenly matched in a deck like this is that your battle phase, for you, doesn't matter. Um, and for them typically doesn't, doesn't really matter if you have a battle phase, but even if you remove like four cards with an evenly matched, your deck doesn't do enough to really take advantage of suddenly being so far ahead in card advantage. And so they typically have a chance to catch up and that can be problematic. So that's something to consider if you are going to play this deck. Um, these could also be, uh, Lord of the Heavenly Prisons I've considered. Um, I even consider taking these, uh, dropping the two of these for two Lord of the Heavenly Prisons. Um, just because again, Lightning Storm and Duster are annoying and the less you have to play according to those existing, the better. But that's all up in the air. Um, I just want to show you all a deck I've had a ton of fun with lately. I know it's not the most exciting deck, and most people probably will hate seeing, uh, you know, a bunch of trap cards and things like that, but especially if you're working on your technical play like I am, a deck like this is really helpful because each decision you make matters so much because the quality of your cards is so weak. Um, and you'll also learn very quickly how... I'm trying to think of the word for it. Just how iffy people's technical play can be. Um, everyone knows how to handle hand traps. People tend to panic, though, when they see you go set two or three. So it's a lot of fun if you enjoy, like, really technical grindy games, and I definitely do. Let me know, again, if you guys like this sort of content. I can always do some follow-up on it. I can try to get some gameplay. And if you want to pick up any of these cards, use the affiliate link in the description below. A portion of that does go back to the channel, so you're helping me out while you're helping yourselves out, which is awesome. And make sure to check out... When I live stream, I will only be doing it exclusively on YouTube. Um, 
and I'm not totally sure when. It's going to probably be like two or three times a week, and it's pretty late at night. But you'll see a mixture of Duel Links, uh, Master Duel, and even sometimes I'll just stream just sitting at my desk chit-chatting with you all if you want. Uh, let me know if that's something you're interested in. And until next time, have a great day.